Welcome back. Your, your liver, very important organ because cancer cannot get a hold on the body if your liver is working well. So what I want to do tonight is I want to give you an understanding of your liver because when you have an understanding of your liver, you actually then have the knowledge on how to treat it. Um, everything that comes into your body comes first to the liver and the liver basically determines where everything goes. Meet Barbara O'Neill a popular health expert whose natural, holistic health methods have inspired countless success stories. Many have transformed their lives through her unique approach to wellness. Today, we're going to cover an essential yet often overlooked topic, liver health. This vital organ detoxifies the body, processes nutrients, and supports many key functions. As we age, maintaining a healthy liver becomes even more crucial. Shockingly, about one in four adults may have liver disease without showing any symptoms. This highlights the need to understand how to care for your liver to improve overall health. To help you understand everything better, we'll explore the liver's functions, factors affecting its health, and practical strategies to support it. Let's get started. And everything that comes out of your body comes out under the jurisdiction of the liver. And so I'm going to begin with showing you, which I already have touched on, is what happens with everything that comes into the liver. Now, any environmental poisons that come into the liver, the liver assesses it, and if it's really toxic, it wraps it up in fat and stores it. But if it can, it'll break it down to a water-soluble state and release it. What we also looked at in our last lecture is what happens with the food. All of this food breaks down to glucose in the gastrointestinal tract, and then it goes into the blood on the M1 straight to the liver. So here's our liver. And then the liver determines where it goes. The liver is the largest internal organ in the body. Your liver is the only organ that has the ability to regenerate and you'll see why God made it that so as we go through this lecture. Your liver is called the project manager because everything that goes into the body goes first to the liver. It determines what happens. And so as I showed you in the last lecture, all of this food breaks down to glucose. The glucose goes into the blood and it goes straight to the liver. It's called the portal vein. I call it the M1, straight to the liver. And then the liver determines, first of all, it goes to the cell. So I'll take you through this once more. The, the glucose goes into the cell. It goes through a 20-step pathway, which gives us two units of energy. End result of the 20-step pathway is a chemical form of glucose called pyruvate. Pyruvate, as the chemical form of glucose, gets fed into the powerhouse called the powerhouse because this eight-step pathway gives us 36 units of energy. And as I showed you, this is the oxygen pathway. Oxygen is what causes so much energy. This has no oxygen, so it's also called the anaerobic pathway. We also looked at how the excess glucose gets stored as glycogen, little bunches of grapes. We also looked at how the excess after that of glucose is stored as fat. Your muscle cell stores this glycogen, the quick release glucose store, and it can only be used by your muscle cell. But your liver can also store glycogen. And the liver that your glycogen, I mean the glycogen that your liver stores, it can go all over the body, whereas the Glycogen in your muscle cell can only be used by your muscle cell. There was a, there's a book called Good Calories, Bad Calories by a, um, Gary Torbs. You might have heard of it. It's quite a famous book. And he shows that back in the 1850s, there was a man called William Banting who was putting on weight. And he went to a very famous doctor called Claude Bernard, a French doctor, and he took him off all starches. It was called starches then. We call it carbohydrates now. So what did he eat? He ate a lot of fiber, a lot of vegetables. He ate a lot of meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs. There was his protein. And meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs also 
has a lot of fat. That was the diet that, that, uh, that he was given by Dr. Claude Bernard. The weight just fell off him. Can you see why? You see, when you're not giving your body this quick release glucose stores, your liver can convert protein and fat to glucose, and your liver can turn your fat stores into glucose. And as I said the other lecture, that's called gluconeogenesis, creating new glucose out of the fat stores. Gluconeogenesis is an important job of the liver that makes glucose from proteins and fats when there aren't enough carbohydrates. This is especially helpful when you're fasting or exercising a lot as it keeps your energy steady. The liver also controls cholesterol levels and removes harmful substances from your blood like drugs and alcohol. By doing these tasks, the liver plays a key role in your overall health. It helps maintain your energy, manages fat and protein, and keeps toxins in check. Knowing how your liver works highlights why it's essential to care for this vital organ. But most people stop the fat because of cholesterol. And this is a good time to look at cholesterol because your liver makes cholesterol. And it makes cholesterol according to the demands that the body puts on it. And 80% of the cholesterol that your liver makes is made from glucose. And 20% of the cholesterol that your liver makes is made from fat. Now this illustration alone shows you it's not the butter on the bread, it's the bread under the butter that's the problem, it's not the fat. Yes, there's a lot of problems with butter today <laughs> because of the cows that it came from. I put olive oil on my bread, my husband puts avocado on his bread, in fact most of the time I put both on my bread. Because remember fat doesn't make you fat. So let me show you the two different types of cholesterol. You've got HDL, which is high density lipoprotein, and you've got low LDL, low density lipoprotein. HDL's role in the body is that of a carrier. It carries excess cholesterol out of the blood and back to the liver. That's why it's called the good guy. LDL is the repairer and the rebuilder. Unfortunately, it's called the bad guy. But what you've got to remember is the body doesn't make anything bad. It has a role in the body. It has another role and it delivers cholesterol to the brain. And your brain loves cholesterol. So let's have a look at how these two work in the body, particularly in the blood. So here's your artery. And because of its high density, HDL's in the middle. And because of its low density, LDL is on the edge. There's an interesting book that I read recently. It was only written about a year ago. It's called Put Your Heart in Your Mouth by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. She's well known for her gut and psychology book. She spends about three chapters showing that the cause of heart disease is damage to the arterial wall. So what damages the arterial wall? They're the endothelium cells. Cigarettes, there's 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette, and those chemicals damage the walls of the artery. The chemicals in our food, in our cleaning products, in our shampoos, in our conditioners, in our moisturizers, they're damaging the arterial wall. Mercury, mercury damages the arterial wall. It's found in fish, it's found in the flu vaccine, and it's found in the mercury fillings in our mouth. Mold. Mold is toxic. Mold gets into your blood, it can cause holes in the arterial walls. A high wheat, high sugar diet creating a lot of glucose, that sticky glucose connects with, with protein molecules and sticks to the wall of the arteries so the high carb diet can do it. Alcohol and high sugar just feed it. Who's going to plug up the holes, students? The repairer and the rebuilder. The repairer and the rebuilder comes along and plugs up the holes. Now the person doesn't realise that the mouldy house is killing them. They don't really believe what it says on the packet of the cigarettes. They don't realise that the chemicals that they're cleaning their bathrooms with, that are in their food, and so what's happening is the damage continues. They don't realise that the mercury fillings in their mouth are damaging the walls. So what's happening in the arteries? What's it called? 
atherosclerosis. To blame cholesterol for heart disease is like blaming the fire trucks for the fire. To lower your risk of heart disease, focus on overall health instead of just cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is essential for making hormones, vitamin D, and keeping cells healthy. However, when it builds up in damaged artery walls, it forms plaques, leading to atherosclerosis, which narrows the arteries and increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes. To support heart health, eat a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins, while cutting back on processed foods and sugary drinks. Regular exercise is also crucial for maintaining healthy arteries. By making these lifestyle changes, you can more effectively prevent heart disease and enhance your overall well-being. Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, in his book, The Great Cholesterol Con, he says there is no proof We've been deceived. So when they increase the cholesterol-lowering medication, which so many are on, sadly, what does that do? Well, what it does is it blocks the pathway in the liver that the liver uses to make cholesterol, but it's the same pathway that the liver uses to make coenzyme Q10. What's coenzyme Q10? It's your heart protective enzyme. So someone can go on cholesterol-lowering medication to reduce their heart disease and increase their risk. Surely that's reducing heart disease, has it? No. Something else is happening. Are you ready for the side effects of cholesterol-lowering medication? Dementia, Alzheimer's, memory loss, muscle wasting, and they've just added another one, breast cancer, because your sex hormones are made from cholesterol. So if you're on cholesterol-lowering medication, you can stop immediately. There will be a side effect. Your memory will return. <laughs> That's the only side effect. 17 cases, 1,700 cases of Alzheimer's are being di uh, diagnosed every week in Australia. Okay, so cholesterol-lowering medication, fat-free diet, margarine, Surely that's reduced heart disease? No, because it's a false theory. In his research, Ansel Keys, he had to eliminate the Maasai. They live on blood, milk, and meat, zero heart disease. He had to put them out of the equation. They don't prove his theory. Is that true science? Mind you, they don't live long because their poor gut can't handle no fiber, but they don't have heart disease. We've been spun a lie, I'm sorry to break the news to you. Well, they've tried something else. This is another great deception. When I was in America two years ago, running a health retreat in Alabama, we had a nutritionist do our program. She was 69. She was in very good nick for her age, still working. She said, I have the advantage of being trained in university 40 years ago. She said, 40 years ago, we were taught that a cholesterol level under 300 was perfectly safe. Now, on Australian standards, that would be about 7.5. Did you hear that? Perfectly safe. She said they've dropped the levels. In America, it's now 200. Anyone over 200 is put on cholesterol-lowering medication. What would that be in Australia? Is that 5.5? Is that true? Anyone over 5.5 in Australia is put on cholesterol-lowering medication? Okay, so cholesterol-lowering medication, fat-free diet, they've lowered the levels, surely that has reduced heart disease, has it? Not at all, not at all. It's still the number one killer. Yet Alzheimer's come up, mental illness has come up because your brain cannot function without cholesterol. Cholesterol-lowering medications and fat-free diets were once seen as the main ways to reduce heart disease, but it's more complicated. Research shows that while these methods can lower cholesterol, they don't always lead to fewer heart disease cases or heart attacks. Cholesterol is essential for cell membranes and helps produce hormones and vitamin D. The brain also needs cholesterol to function properly, and a lack of it can lead to memory issues. Instead of just focusing on lowering cholesterol, it's better to adopt a balanced approach to heart health that includes a healthy diet, regular exercise, and stress management. This broader view supports overall well-being.
But what I'd like to look at now is what happens with everything that comes out of your body. And I'd like to show you what happens at Misty Mountain Health Retreat when our guests fast for two days. You see, when you fast for two days, we serve fresh fruit and vegetable juices every two hours. When you fast for two days, digestion stops. And we're not giving enough fuel to run on, and so your body starts to break down fat stores. And something else a little bit more sinister is being released. It's your fat-soluble toxins that have been stored in our fat cells over many a year. And your body cannot release fat-soluble toxins in a fat-soluble state. They have to be broken down to a water-soluble state. Then they can be released. So let me show you how this happens. This is the symbol of the fat-soluble toxin. Phase one. So our guests on Monday, when they're fasting, their liver goes into phase one of the breakdown. In phase one, the liver takes this fat-soluble toxin and it breaks it down to a metabolite. A metabolite simply means first stage of metabolism. This metabolite is a lot more complicated than it originally was. It's actually highly volatile. This metabolite creates a lot of free radicals and free radicals damage the tissues. This metabolite can sometimes be a hundred times more toxic than it originally was, especially in the breakdown of alcohol. You might say, well, what's the liver done? It's just created something worse than it originally was. It's a process. It's like when I clean out my kitchen cupboards, my kitchen looks a hundred times messier than when I started. It's a process. But your liver has certain needs at this phase. It needs antioxidants. Antioxidants are given a nickname, free radical scavengers. So what are your most potent antioxidants? Beta carotene, that's found in your orange and your green colored vegetables. And vitamin C, ascorbic acid with bioflavonoids and vitamin E, a fat soluble vitamin. We have to be eating fat to get our fat-soluble vitamins. Now, within 36 hours of beginning a detox, a fast, phase two kicks in. In phase two, the liver takes this highly volatile metabolite and it joins it together with amino acids. The union of the amino acids and the toxic metabolite creates the water-soluble state. And remember, as a water-soluble state, it can be easily released out of the body. And its symbol is a wave in a box. Phase three happens in conjunction with phase two. In phase three, your liver takes this water-soluble state and releases it out via your urine, releases it out via your sweat glands, releases it out via your colon. And that's why at Misty Mountain Health Retreat, every afternoon our guests go in a steam sauna and have a good sweat, important part of the detox. Staying hydrated and eating well are essential during this process. Drinking enough water helps your body flush out toxins through urine and sweat. Getting plenty of sleep is crucial too, as your body repairs itself and processes toxins while you rest. Light activities, like stretching or walking, can aid detoxification by improving blood flow and helping the lymphatic system remove waste. At the retreat, we emphasize relaxation and rest to enhance your detox experience. By focusing on these steps, ensuring you drink enough water, engage in gentle exercise, and get good rest, you can make your detox more effective and comfortable. And that's it again for today, guys. We hope you learned something from this video about your liver and how to keep it healthy and strong. Keep in mind that a healthy liver is vital for your overall health and significantly affects your quality of life. If you have any questions or need further advice, please drop them in the comments below. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more valuable health tips. And as always, stay informed, stay healthy.